You're now watching Way Back Wednesday, sponsored by Flores Glass and Mirror Company. Service in the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work. Hello folks and welcome to Way Back Wednesday. I'm your host Randy Adcox. Good of you to join us tonight. I'm um, going to show you some pictures in a bit but before we get into that I wanted to share with you something that um, kind of on a fluke, on a, I guess a whim you might say, I actually put a post on Facebook a couple days ago and I know many of you who watch the show are also members of the Way Back, uh, Rocket Mount Way Back Quinn website. Uh, or Facebook site, I'm sorry. And so you're probably already familiar with this, but I actually put a post on Facebook and it was just simply worded, name a local business that you remember from your, child or your childhood that's still in existence today. And I had over a hundred responses, some were duplicates of course, and it was really neat because some of these I had forgotten. And we're gonna show you some pictures tonight of some of these businesses. But as I read this list, and I'm gonna read through the list first and then we'll get into the pictures. But I wanted to kind of put out to the viewers tonight, as you're, as you're listening to this list of businesses, and as far as I can tell, by the way, these are all still in operation today. And some of these go back quite a ways, as you'll see. But I want you to be thinking about that. And if you know of any businesses that, um, because we've got a, a, a more mature viewing audience than, than uh, what's frequently on Facebook, I, I realize that. So some of the things that um, some, some of you may remember will go back further than, than a lot of what the folks on Facebook will remember. So anyway, having said that, if you think of a business that you remember from your childhood that is still in operation today that's not on the list, give me a call, 407 I'll add it to my list. And what I'm hoping to do, I really ran out of time. I got fascinated by this project, and my intention was to find corresponding pictures to all the businesses I'm going to list tonight. Well, that quickly got mired down into a, just a quagmire of uh, searching out information, looking at buildings, um, because a lot of these businesses moved around quite a bit, as you'll see in a minute. Some of these businesses were, have been in four or five different locations over the years. And so what I quickly found was that trying to track down where these businesses were located over the years that they've been in business, and some have been in business for 50, 60, 70 years or more, and they moved multiple times, and it just, I, I found out very quickly that I need more time to put this project into perspective. So, having said that, um, I'm going to read the list first, and as I'm reading this list, be thinking about business that you remember as a child that are still in business today. It's okay if they've changed names, that has happened a couple of times, uh, minor changes, but if you know of a business that I don't uh, read here on this list, give me a call, 407-1111, I'll add it to my list, and I'm going to try to put together a little more history on these businesses that have been in Rocky Mount for decades. And some of these you'll recognize, we've actually addressed some of these businesses and, and talked about them and shown pictures in the past of some of these businesses, and that's why I didn't try to get pictures for all of them, because we have covered some of these with pictures extensively in the past. But the first on the list was Davenport Auto Sales or Davenport Motor Company. Um, someone posted on Facebook since 1929. I didn't realize it had been in existence that long. In just a couple of weeks ago, if you remember, we, were, we showed some pictures of the three or four different locations where Davenport had been over the years, uh, over on Washington. Street and then of course down on South Church Street. Uh, they're currently now on English Road of course. Um, but that was one that got several mentions uh, on Facebook and so well and that's another one I want to do a little more research on but like I said we've got some pictures on that uh, from a previous show. Uh, Williams Food was another that got a couple of mentions and Williams Food has been through several transitions over the years. Um, I'm not sure where they started out as far as I can remember they were down on the corner of um, Church Street and Grand Avenue there, uh, well Gray Street before it gets to the river tracks and turns into Grand Avenue. But anyway, uh, that's, they've sort of been there a very long time. I know as a child they were there, and I'm not sure how much longer they had been there before that, but I want to say they go back to the 1930s, possibly uh, earlier. Um, the hot dog stand on Falls Road. Several folks mentioned the hot dog stand. It was Adams and Robertson's, of course, for many years. It was Booney's for a number of years. Uh, Skippy Ezel's got it now. But the hot dog stand on Falls Road got several mentions in my list of businesses you remember as a child that are still in existence today. Uh, many of you may remember, too, that the hot dog stand actually closed up for a while. In fact, before George Boone got it, it had been closed up for, I don't know, four, five, maybe six years, I think it was. 
and then Booney got it and re-erected uh, re it, I guess you'd say, or resurrected it, a better way to say it. And, um, and so, of course, it's been in existence ever since. Um, Booney's now dead, of course, but Skippy's got it run it now. Um, the Rocky Mount Bowling Center one I had not really thought about before, but they've been around a long time in that same location. Um, if you remember from a previous show, there was another bowling alley down on Marigold Street, and I don't know if it actually moved from there to where it is now, or if that's an entirely different um, operation altogether, but uh, of course we all know where it is now, down at uh, North Church in 301 there, uh, down across from Don Bullock Chevrolet. Uh, Sundrop Bottling Company. Uh, I didn't realize this place has been around as long as it has, but in the 1940 census, 1940, uh, it was actually showing uh, as being on South Church Street. Um, and then in 1963, it showed as being on Raleigh Road, where it's currently located. And we've got some pictures we'll show you a little bit of that. Um, Don Bullock Chevrolet, again, one a business that we've covered a couple times in the past here on the show. Been around many, many years in Rocky Mount, several locations, many of you recall. Um, certainly, um, Don Bullock Chevrolet is, is and, and Davenport too for that matter. Uh, there was a theme I noticed quite over and over again uh, in these businesses that have been around and endured so long, and it was automotive related, uh, food related, um, but certainly those types of businesses have been able to, to last a long time in Rocky Mountain. It's a testament to the families who've run those businesses. Uh, Moore's Bicycle Shop, another one that I remember as a child. Uh, it's been through a couple of transitions of owners, obviously, uh, but still in the same place that I remember it as a child. Now, I'm not sure where it was at before it, it was over on uh, Washington Street, but uh, certainly been there many, many years. Central Cafe, we've covered Central on a couple of shows in the past, and for those that remember, um, and this was before my time, but it was certainly was on Church Street, right around the corner from the, not the location it's at now, but uh, when it was on Thomas Street, uh, it was prior to that, it was around the corner on Church Street, and it moves from there around the corner, kind of across from the old Sears building there on Thomas Street, and then of course they moved from there to where the old Duchess restaurant was, there where they are now. Uh, ate lunch there today as a matter of fact, so. But anyway, that was the one that got several mentions too from on the Facebook post. Uh, Central Building Supply, that's another business that's been around Rocky Mount for many, many years and, and we've talked about it before in previous shows too. Uh, Pridge and Tire and Auto, another family run business, uh, automotive oriented, uh, tires, automotive repair and so forth. And uh, if you remember that, that business goes back to the early 1900s. We've had a couple of uh, episodes on, that covered that business and others, but uh, that's one of the oldest businesses in Rocky Mountain, and it's still in operation today, of course. Uh, Bullock Furniture Company. Uh, I didn't realize, we're going to show you some pictures again uh, in a few minutes. I didn't realize that Bullock Furniture Company used to be down there in that building on the corner of Western Avenue and Main Street where the wall blew over a couple of weeks ago during that storm that passed through. And uh, that was something I learned today while doing some research for this show. So that was, um, and that building was built back, I think, 1905. Had a couple other occupants in it before it was Bullock Furniture Company, but, but they were in there at one time. Uh, Bailey Jewelry, another uh, business that's been in Rocky Mount uh, for many, many years. I'm not sure exactly when they were established originally, uh, but they've been here as long as I can remember anyway. Certainly 40, 50 years, I know. Um, Rocky Mount Awning and Tent, um, celebrating 95 years in business, and that was a bit of a shock to me. I, I've known about them all my life, but never realized they had been in, in business as long as they have. So, uh, Johnson Funeral Home, another one, been around all my life, certainly. Uh, People's Building Supply, Mr. Ribs Restaurant, uh, Rocky Mount Radiator Works. This was another one I was a little surprised by. In operation since 1927, uh, and the Brazel family is still running that today. Uh, Chuck and Tammy um, and, and their son, um, Brian, are still running the place. So, um, and uh, June Brazel, uh, Chuck's mother, actually put the post on, on Facebook um, uh, marking that it had been there since 1920, or been in existence since 1927. It's not been in this same location, obviously. But anyway, Gardens Barbecue, Dillon Supply, Hunter Odom Funeral Home, Standard Insurance and Realty, Rocky Mount Cord Company, Easy Muffler, uh, Ronald Sykes Alignment, Williams Lumber Company, Carolina Tire, Wholesale Paint Center, uh, Red's Place, Ann's Donut, uh, Dixon Blind and Awning, and Thorpe Music Company. 
So there were other businesses mentioned too. These were the ones that I, I jotted down because primarily these are still in existence. Um, some of the other ones that were listed were businesses that are no longer in business. I think people just, some people anyway, just misunderstood the, the post. But if you know of a business that, that I did not read out there that's been around since your childhood, um, give me a call, 407-1111. We'll talk about it. We'll get a little uh, information, some history on it, and we'll try to dig up some pictures of maybe where it is now, where it was during its transition from the beginnings to now. But um, that was kind of the impetus for tonight's show. Well, we got a call. Let's get this call. Hello there. Are you on the air? Okay, you spoke a little bit about an uncertainty about the bowling lanes, Rocky Mount bowling lanes. Right. That was uh, out there on US 301 bypass across from Don Bullock. Mm -hmm. That place came here in the 50s, but I don't think the people that uh, put that there, they were from somewhere up around Greensboro, or High Point, or Thomasville, and I don't think they ever had anything to do with the bowling facility that you were speaking about over there on Marigold Street. Okay. But that business that's on the bypass out there it dates definitely back to the 50s. Well, I knew it had been here as long as I could remember, so that's interesting. So, But you don't think there was any correlation between the current business on 301 and that one on the Marigold Street? I, I don't think so myself. Okay. And, and there, it may not be. Like I said, I, and there may have been a gap, in fact, in between the time that one on Marigold Street went out of business and between the time the one on uh, Church Street 301 came into existence. So I, I'm going to try to do some more digging and see if I can find out exactly. But you think it was 1950s when the Bowling Alley... Uh, yeah. I okay. got my driver's license in 1960, and those bowl, the, the AMF bowling lanes, Rocky Mount bowling lanes, was out there before I got my driver's license. Okay. All right. All right, buddy. Thank you. All right. Yeah, and that's the kind of information we're looking for. We just want to try to get a, a chronological order of when these businesses came into existence, how long they, uh, well, how long they operated at each location, and that's. Part of what I've spent a good part of the day doing, I've spent a couple hours, in fact, researching some of these businesses, and 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 I was a little surprised by what I found with some of them that they were in locations that I never knew about, never knew that uh, they were in those locations. Um, before I get into the picture, there's one more thing. Ann's Donuts was another business that um, got several mentions, and it's certainly one that deserves a mention. Uh, I was, uh, uh, as a small child, I remember they were over on uh, Pine Street, um, but I was a bit surprised. Donald Winston, who was Ann's son, uh, put a little post under my post today, a little history of Ann's Donuts, and I thought this was really interesting. I'll read this right now. It says, Ann's Donuts, when it opened in 1952, was actually on West Ridge Street, right beside where Super Flame Gas Company is now. My mother, or mommy says, Ann and dad, Ed, or some called him Junior, lived in an apartment above it. Three months after I was born in 1956, we moved to Rosewood Avenue. In fact, they moved right next door to my aunt and uncle, Billy and Isabel Donaldson. Uh, that's when I first met Donald. Uh, and it says, I'm not sure when they moved the shop to the 705 North Pine Street location. So that was something that I found interesting. I never knew Ann's doing it. And of course, now they're, they're on Sunset Avenue over here, down from McDonald's and Taco Bell and all that. But I never knew they were in another location prior to being there on Pine Street, uh, the little white building down there where I knew them from as a child. But in any case, um, it might, I think that building may still be there. Uh, I'm not. I, I meant to ride by there and check it out. I didn't get a chance to do that. But in any case, Ann's Donut was one that got a lot of mention in my little impromptu survey there on Facebook. So I uh, appreciate uh, Donald keying in there and, and giving a little more information. Um, as I said, well, I've got. I do have some pictures I want to share with you, and I've got a little information on some of them, uh, not all of them. And so I tell you what, Lee, let's um, let's go ahead and jump into the pictures. Uh, we've got a minute or two before we get to our first commercial break, and so um, we'll take a look at the first picture here. Oh, these first two or three, in fact, were really just left over from last week's show. We didn't get a chance to get to them, and I thought they were just neat. Oh, we get this call first. Hello there, are you on the air? Um, we don't need to forget the railroad. 
We don't. Absolutely yeah, right. It started out as Atlantic Coastline. Absolutely. It's been through seven or eight mergers. It's now CSX, but mm -hmm. it's been here a long time. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And you know, I that ironically, no one mentioned a railroad. That that was yeah. one that did not get mentioned. But you're exactly right. They certainly yeah, have a place in this Yeah, my husband worked with railroads, uh, and they, we need to include that. We do indeed. Okay, thanks for calling in. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Have a good night. Absolutely a worthy addition to the list, and I will certainly add it to the list. Um, this picture here that you're looking on your screen now, this is one that I had never seen before. I don't know where this was located. Um, it does not look like what I thought it first was. It was identified as the Rocky Mount Mills Picnic Shelter. And I first thought it may be those shelters on the other side of the mill, um, over by the cemetery and so forth. But after looking at it a little more, I don't think it is. I think this picture predates that shelter that's over there by many, many years. So I, I really don't know where this picture was taken. It was just identified as the Rocky Mountain Mills Picnic Shelter. Um, as opposed to the Battle Park picnic shelter. So, and I think those shelters that are over there by the, uh, by the hiking trails and all that, I think they were put in many, many years after this picture was made here. So if anyone knows or remembers seeing a picnic shelter anywhere in the vicinity of Rocky Mountain Mills, this picture is kind of neat because it, it does not show that I can see anyway, that there's no evidence of the mill. So it's either positioned in an area away from the mill um, or the mill was obscured by the trees I'm not sure which but I couldn't find any evidence in this picture of the mill but yet it was identified as a Rocky Mountain Mills picnic area um, the next picture Lee is actually on a prior show some of you may remember there was a, someone had asked about the the Rocky Mountain Mills doctor and the, the I guess infirmary or whatever and this was one of the few pictures that I've seen and I don't know who this gentleman is laying down on the on the little uh, bed there, but anyway, this was the Rocky Mountain Mills, uh, Rocky Mountain Mills nurse. Um, seemed like I remember somebody calling in one night and, and mentioning this lady by name, but I could not remember who that was. Uh, but this was the only picture that I have seen that I remember anyway that showed a picture of the Rocky Mountain Mills nurse. And she may not have been the only one. There may have been others too. So, um, Lee, one more in this in this group in here, and this will be all the Rocky Mountain Mills. And this next one is one I had never seen. This is, uh, I'm assuming, was a display at the mills, but it's, uh, it was identified, the caption was Rocky Mountain Mills Civil War Cannon. If I'm not mistaken, I do believe that's Robert Henry Ricks in the middle there, uh, the man who purchased and paid for the Confederate monument, he himself being a Confederate veteran. Um, he died somewhere in the 1920s, so that dates this picture uh, sometime in that time frame, uh, late teens, early 20s perhaps. Um, but anyway, I don't ever remember seeing a cannon and cannonballs at Rocky Mountain Mills anywhere, but this was in a collection of Rocky Mountain Mills pictures. So I assume somewhere down around Rocky Mountain Mills at some time, there was a cannon down there. It looked like perhaps more than one. I think there's another one behind it back there. So anyway, I tell you what, Lee, let's take our first commercial break now. When we come back, we're going to jump back in, folks, show you some, some more pictures. We'll take your calls. We'll look at um, some other things and talk about some of these old bits of the Rocky Mount. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a minute with more Way Back Wednesday. You're now watching Way Back Wednesday. Sponsored by Flores Glass and Mirror Company. Service in the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work. I'm Daniel Moss, on the Cornerstone Funeral Home, and I'd like to invite you and your family to give our family an opportunity to serve you in your time of need. And we offer a full line of funeral services, everything from visitations to graveside services to cremations on site with a live crematory, as well as a banquet hall to meet the catering needs of our families that we serve. We offer catering service, we offer refreshments prior to visitations and services of our family, and we want to invite you to come and experience the difference here. Cornerstone Funeral Home. When faced with special care needs for elderly or disabled loved ones, families want compassionate, comforting care. That's Tender Touch Home Care Services' goal. 
providing the level of care we would expect for our own. With over 10 years of home care excellence, Tender Touch provides an array of services that keeps your loved one at home. From personal care, light housekeeping, errands, and meal preparation to our private duty care program which combines all of our home care offerings in one package. Tender Touch Home Care Services, where your needs are our concern. We're in our 18th year of practice at the Hammer Chiropractic Center and we've seen over 15,000 different people in the Rocky Mountain area. 40% of headaches actually come from a neck problem. Many patients come in taking multiple aspirin, over-the-counter medications and such a day and we can get you to stop doing that and actually fix the problem so the headaches don't arise anymore. A lot of people think chiropractic hurts. It does not. Most of the people come in and they feel great when they leave. You're now watching Way Back Wednesday, sponsored by Flores Glass and Mirror Company. Service in the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work. We're back. We're back. Okay, folks, you're just tuning in. You're watching Way Back Wednesday. I'm Randy Adcott. It's good to have you with us. Before the break, we were looking at a couple old pictures uh, from Rocky Mountain Mills, and as I said, they were left over. We had, uh, there was actually a few more from, from last week's show that, uh, and some of them were kind of copies of pictures that were, were very similar uh, images from other pictures, but those three there were just, I thought, kind of unique. So, anyway, um, and someone else had requested, he said, he said, I'm getting tired of the meal pictures, so... <laughs> We'll move on from the meal. That's all I had tonight on the meal. Uh, the next picture, if you want to go ahead and put that up, I had mentioned earlier, we were talking about uh, Bullock Furniture Company and where they had previously been located. And I didn't realize until I was kind of researching today's show that, I, that, I'm, that they had had a previous location prior to where they are now, uh, down on uh, Church Street. And if you remember, this is not the best picture, I do apologize, but this building on the left there, that's the one that the wall fell down and that, and that storm that blew through a couple of weeks ago. That's Western Avenue, of course, and Main Street there. And they've since gone in and demolished the other remaining wall, so that building is now gone. But that particular building right there uh, dates back to 1905, and it was actually built by D.J. Rose. That was something I found interesting. I didn't realize that uh, D.J. Rose was, was in the building business that far back in Rocky Mount. Obviously, that, that family has been in the construction business for many years in Rocky Mount. But this building was actually built by D.J. Uh, Rose in 1905, and it was originally built uh, as Mr. H.E. Brewer's Farm Supply Store. And that's the same brewer as the Brewer Paint and Wallpaper family. And it says um, it was located at 202 Southwest Main Street. Um, in later years, the building was occupied by Bullock Furniture, J.C. Penney. And I'm not certain, but I believe there was a shoe store in there, too, at one time. And I can't remember the name of the shoe store. But uh, obviously, over the years, there's been several businesses in there. But I, I did not realize until today that Bullock Furniture Company was actually in that building right there at one time, too. Um, I don't, I'm not sure when that was. I don't have a date or a time when they moved from this building to the Church Street location. Uh, and it's possible they could have moved somewhere in between those two as well. But in any case, they were there. I think, Lee, the next picture may be um, a couple more of the, of the saying or general shot. I'm not certain because I had a couple of pictures there. Uh, yeah, that's just showing uh, what happened a couple of weeks ago when the windstorm came through and blew that wall down. Um, and it's a shame that uh, that building couldn't be salvaged because it was a a lot of history there obviously and it's just a really sad scenario that the building had to be completely demolished that wall that collapsed by the way was freestanding for the most part um, and it was brought to my attention several months ago that it was a safety hazard and and it's again um, it's luckily no one was hurt it's sad that the building wall fell down but had someone been walking by they could have easily been very seriously injured or killed so um, it's gone and it obviously won't be rebuilt, but in any case. Okay, Lee, um, I think the next picture is actually a shot of the, the current location for Bullet Furniture, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there you go. And this is where I've always remembered Bullock's being. Uh, if they were anywhere other than this, and if anyone remembers them being anywhere else um, prior to this, let me know. 
407 is our number. But um, as I said, this was where I remember them as a child, and it was only during my research today that I found a reference to the fact they were at that other location over in the corner there, uh, Western Avenue and Main Street, uh, at some point earlier. Okay, Lee, uh, let's go ahead then to the next picture. And this next one is, this is interesting to me here because this was something I was not aware of. Uh, if you remember, one of the businesses that was listed um, was Rocky Mount Awning and Tent. And one of the owners, family members, I think it was, actually uh, made a uh, point of saying that the business had been uh, 95 years in operation. And so I went to do a little digging today. And this, I remember this building as being Rawls and Winston Auto Parts over on North Church Street. But apparently in 1940, because I went back and looked at the 1940 city directory, and the address was listed as 804 North Church Street, which is this building right here in blue. And that was the location given for Rocky Mount Awning and Tent. Now, I'm not sure where they were before they moved into this building. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly when Rawls and Winston took this building over. Uh, I know they were there in the 1970s, Rawls and Winston I mean, uh, because I used to do business with Rawls and Winston when they were there. And so my guess is uh, Rocky Mount Awning and Tent moved out of this location and moved a little, a little bit further south to the location where the old Ray Bandy Dodge was after Ray Bandy Dodge moved out. But in any case, this address was listed as, um, what did I just say, 804 North Church Street. Um, and it was listed actually in 1940 and 1963 with the same address. So a little bit of surprise there, I didn't realize. Um, the next picture, Lee, I believe, is their current location today. There you go. And of course now it's known as Carolina Awning and Tent. And that's a fairly recent name change. Um, I didn't realize they had changed the name until very recently. I rode by a few days ago, in fact, and saw they had changed the name. But um, obviously been there a long time. And again, this was, many of you remember, the old Ray Bandy Dodge was in this little building right here uh, for many, many years. And when they moved and, and went out, I guess, after the bypass out there, um, I think uh, the awning tent place moved in shortly after that, and they've been there ever since, to my knowledge. So anyway, all right, Lee, so let's go on the next picture here. Actually, I think it's Williams Foods, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, this was actually taken off Williams Foods' website. It's a very modern looking picture, and it doesn't, I think this is an artist rendition, actually, because it doesn't look exactly like this now. Um, and I thought it was neat that this was a, an image posted on their website, and I had to do a double tape because I thought, that's this is not the same business, but it is. It's, the address is listed there, of course, 615 North Church Street, and it's right across the street from the uh, Carolina Awning and Tent Place. Um, Williams Foods has been in business, I know, for well over 60 years. Um, I had a discussion some time ago with uh, J.B. Williams, um, his father, I think, um, and perhaps one of his uncles, I'm not sure, but anyway, started the business. I want to say back in their 30s. Uh, I know when I was a small child, it was down there on the corner of Church Street and uh, Gray Street. And look, oh, we got a call. Let's see who this is. Hello there, are you on the air? All right, I think right on the front of the Williams Foods building, it's got the words since 1922. Uh, you know what? I, that, uh, I think I remember that. I think I remember that. So that would make sense. That would make. I know it's been a long time. Right. Okay. All right, buddy. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. I'm make myself a note right here now. 1922. Um, but yeah, it's. It certainly has been through transitions, obviously, they are currently now doing. In fact, I think the next picture, if you want to go to the next, I think it's also Williams Foods. And it's a, there you go, um, trackside restaurant equipment um, is on the side of the building there. And for those that, that may remember the front there where it's got the WF and the Williams Food Inc., um, that was, of course, the front entrance to the store that I remember um, as a child. And that's where you went in and out, of course. And I'm not, I don't remember exactly when they changed um, 
and went from a basically a convenience store, a walk-in store, I guess you'd say, so people could walk in and out, to more of a wholesaler. Um, but when they did that, they enclosed the whole building into sheet metal here and, and closed off all the windows and doors. And so, but um, anyway, the building is looks quite a bit different now than it did, uh, as I remember, as a child. But I think it's been in this same location for most of its existence. So um, apparently we're approaching 100 years, you know, 98 years, in fact, uh, for business operation. And so that, that's impressive for one family. And uh, Joe Williams, uh, as far as I know, still runs this business. And so it's been in the family all these years. Um, a testament to the, the good service. And oh, let's get this call here. Hello there, you're on the air. Okay, in the 1945 Carolina phone book, Bullock Furniture Company is, was listed then at 202 South Main Street, but then in 1953 they had their 124 South Church Street listed, so that move came between, between 45 and 53. Ah, that's interesting. Okay. Right. But they did move from the old down Main Street into the location where they are now. Is that right? I guess. I mean, that's the only two uh, entries I can throw at you. Okay. All righty. Well, that makes sense. All right, buddy. Thank you. Okay, dokie. All right. So, um, tell you what, let's go to the next picture then. Oh, we'll get this call first, though. Hello there. You're on the air. Randy, uh, Williams Food was, was that first building right on the corner there, and it was like a grocery store. Right, right. And uh, I think it was Wheeler Implement Company was located from the side of that building on down uh, beyond where Williams occupies right now and the whole backyard behind Williams Food. Going through the railroad track right there? That's right, and uh -huh. then uh, Standard Electric moved in after them, and I, I'm not going to swear to the wheel, wheel emblem, but it was something like a tractor company. Okay. And then Standard Electric moved in there, and uh, they had their sheet metal shop right next to Williams Food, and then when Standard Electric moved out there on uh, Atlantic Avenue, mm -hmm. that's when Williams made their enclosure of all that that you see now. Okay. And roughly, that was somewhere, um, probably somewhere in the 70s or 80s. I know that, that Standard Electric was there in 61. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that's interesting because I, I used to work for Standard Electric. Um, when I got out of the Navy, I went to work for them for about a year, in fact. That was in... It was in 87, I guess it was, because uh, I got out in 86 and went to work there in 87. But I didn't realize that they had ever been down there on Church Street. That was, I, that well, was, they, they, uh, at that time, there was two brothers. One of them was named R.O. Purvis, mm -hmm. and he owned Standard Electric, and the other Purvis man owned uh, Carolina Bill and Supply. Oh, really? <laughs> not Carolina, no, not Carolina People, so People Bill and Supply. Okay. Over oh. there next to um, where the log cabin and all that mess is at now. Um, Pete, it's on Pearl, I believe it's Pearl Street. Yeah, that uh, I'm just talking about. That's um, shoot, People's Building Supply is actually on 301, but it was People's. It was People's something else. I know what you're talking about. I know a guy used well, to work there. People's Building Supply at, oh, at that it? time. Matter of fact, Jake Brazel worked in the uh, cabinet making. Book area okay um, so they moved from there on 301 no no right there on uh, Pearl Street that's what I mean they moved from Pearl Street to 301 yeah that's right okay. of course, I think different owners you know took it over yeah, uh, the, the one, go ahead I think that on 301 is actually Westwood Lumber Company and People's Building Supply they joined forces there that's right and I believe the Powell's made the two or three guys joined in together and, and you know made up the ownership of, yeah of i've heard that. it and john high was in that group too as i recall that i probably yeah yeah I, I i i didn't realize that was the same people's over there on pearl street i remember when that was over there but i didn't realize it that was, was the same it, it, it's so quality stuff just like carolina bill and supply on gray street they they were top quality okay materials. 
Hop, uh, that is that is something I do not know. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, right. All right, buddy. Have a good night. Okay. There you go, folks. You learn something every week on this show. <laughs> I do anyway. I certainly do. All right, then I tell you what, Lee. Let's go ahead to our next picture. Um, this is another one that uh, was on the list. This is a Sundrop Bottling Company. And obviously, it's a, we're out here on um, Highway 97, which I think now goes by the name of Wester, uh, I mean, uh, Raleigh Boulevard. Uh, West Raleigh Boulevard is what it goes by now. But we all, we, most of us knew it as uh, Highway 97, going out of Rocky Mount, westbound. But anyway, this business has been around a long time, too. Oh, we got a call. Let's get this call. Hello there. Are you on the air? Hey, buddy. How you doing? Today? Hey. Hello, Harold. How are you, buddy? All right. I, I'm not as smart as Eric. <laughs> I don't have all that information. <laughs> but I'm older. Um, <laughs> thinking about the bowling lanes. Yeah. I know they came in the early, early, early 60s. Mm -hmm. um, a fellow named Don Haynes came here as the first manager. He came out of Lexington, and I think uh, Eric mentioned that, some people in the western part of the state. Right. Initially owned and operated that, and that's why Don moved down here from that area. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just thinking it was early, early 60s that that lane was built because at that time I was getting out of school and Bobby Gorham was uh, in the process of building Terrytown. Mm -hmm. And it was long about that time that it cranked up, and we bowled a lot during the early 60s. But uh, you mentioned. Um, earlier about some older places in town Arnold L. Adams Wholesale yeah. I don't think I've heard it mentioned it has been around a long time and still down um, South Church Street and you know yeah, that's a great a great point my dad worked there I'm ashamed for not remembering that myself but yeah that's, you know, that's the French Club is an all shoot that's down. right that's exactly right yep but that's an older older business, of course, in town. It certainly is. And we did a little segment on that show one night because they were over off Koki Road. Um, right. Back in the late 50s, early 60s. Cause my dad worked for them then before they moved over to the right. Church Street location. Yep, sure did. I, I remember when my children were born and uh, I thought I could save a dollar. I bought my baby food by the half a case from them at that time. <laughs> and... Uh, I guess Roger got tired of eating peaches. Uh, but uh, getting to this photo you have now, uh, which is the Sundrop plant you referred to, right. or the sun, Sundrop operation. You know, Sundrop is relatively new, mm -hmm. but for many years that was the double cola bottling yep. plant. Exactly. Totally. Exactly. In the days of the RC Pies. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, with double cola, but Sundrop came on with a lot of popularity and. Of course, that's what we know it as today. The Bear family does right. a good job with the growth of that business. I think they still have it, too. And that is correct, I think. Yep. And, you know, I actually found a picture. I'll show it in a minute here. Um, I actually found a picture. They were over, prior to this location, they were over at uh, South Church Street. And in the 1940 census, the Double Cola Bottling Company was shown as being at 901 South Church Street. And, uh, and then apparently sometime um, between 1940 and 1963, because in the 63 city directory, they were showing this address right here, this um, Highway 97 address, or Western, uh, Raleigh, West Raleigh Boulevard as it's known now. So, but that was, I remember there was a double call of bottling company, but I didn't ever know they were ever on South Church Street, but apparently they were. So, a little bit of history there. Well, they were double cold out there on 97 for several years mm -hmm. prior to sun drop. Right. Okay. All right, buddy. Appreciate you. No problem. Have a good. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. All right, Lee, I'll tell you what, uh, bring it back to me. Uh, we're out of time for our next commercial break, so we'll go ahead and do that now. And when we come back from the commercial, folks, we're going to show you a couple more. We have quite a few more pictures, actually. And we'll take your calls, and we'll look at some more old pictures and talk about some more old Rocky Mount. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Way Back Wednesday. You're now watching Way Back Wednesday, sponsored by Flores Glass and Mirror Company. Service in the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work.
I'm Daniel Moss, owner of Cornerstone Funeral Home, and I'd like to invite you and your family to give our family an opportunity to serve you in your time of need. And we offer a full line of funeral services, everything from visitations to graveside services to cremations on site with a live crematory, as well as a banquet hall to meet the catering needs of our families that we serve. We offer catering service, we offer refreshments prior to visitation and services of our family, and we want to invite you to come and experience the difference here at Cornerstone Funeral Home. When faced with special care needs for elderly or disabled loved ones, families want compassionate, comforting care. That's Tender Touch Home Care Services' goal, providing the level of care we would expect for our own. With over 10 years of home care excellence, Tender Touch provides an array of services that keeps your loved one at home. From personal care, light housekeeping, errands, and meal preparation, to our private duty care program, which combines all of our home care offerings in one package. Tender Touch Home Care Services, where your needs are our concern. We're in our 18th year of practice at the Hammer Chiropractic Center, and we've seen over 15,000 different people in the Rocky Mount area. 40% of headaches actually come from a neck problem. Many patients come in taking multiple aspirin, over-the-counter medications and such a day, and we can get you to stop doing that and actually fix the problem so the headaches don't rise anymore. A lot of people think chiropractic hurts. It does not. Most of the people come in and they feel great when they leave. You're now watching Way Back Wednesday, sponsored by Flores Glass and Mirror Company. Service in the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work. And we're back. We're back. Folks, just tuning in. You're watching Way Back Wednesday. I'm your host, Randy Adcock. So good to have you with us. Uh, before the break, we were talking about the Sundrop Bottling Company, and prior to that, it was a double cola bottling company. Uh, as Harold said, um, uh, I think the Barry family is still in charge of operation over there. And during the, my research for tonight's show, I actually was looking back through some of the old uh, city directories. I've got several of them, and I like to go back and uh, they, cause I, they started like 1908, I think it was 1905, somewhere along there, and then they don't go every year. In fact, some years are, are joined. But anyway, I went back and looked at city directories, and lo and behold, in the 1940 uh, city directory, the Double Cola Bottling Company was listed as 901, I think it is, South Church Street. And so uh, I never knew they were that, that part of town. So anyway, the next picture, if you go ahead and put the next picture on the screen, we'll, uh, oh, gee, my phone's going off. Sorry, folks, I forgot to turn the thing off. <laughs> And we got a call. Let's get this call. Hello there. Are you on the air? Hello. Hello, if you can hear me, I can't hear you. Okay, I'm on the air. Ah, there you go. You're on the air. How's it going tonight? Hey. I have been watching this show for quite a, quite a time. Yes, sir. And I have not heard anybody mention the fact that where 301 Bypass comes back into South Church Street. Mm-hmm. We used to call that Little Mexico. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You've we heard that before. Yes, sir. Yeah, we have talked oh, about that on the show. <laughs> <laughs> How did okay, you miss just it? I just want to give you a call. <laughs> well, we thank Why you not? for watching. We thank you for your call. But, oh, yeah, we're familiar with the Little Mexico area of Rocky Mount. Sure are. Uh, all right. All right, buddy. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> okay. All righty, so we were talking earlier about the Sundrop bottling and double cola bottling, and in the 1940 city director, as I said, this location right here uh, was listed as the address for the double cola bottling company. And then uh, I went to the 1963 city directory, and at that point they were showing up at the um, Raleigh Road or Highway 97 location. So um, sometime between 1940 and 1963 they moved from this location, and I don't, I don't, I didn't find them listed anywhere else other than these two addresses. So I'm guessing they moved from here out to uh, the uh, Highway 97 or, or um, Raleigh Road location. So anyway, and I think this is now, um, shoot, I forgot the name of this place now. Uh, there's something occupying this building now. But I really didn't realize this building was that old. And I don't know that the Double Cola Bottling Company was the first built, uh, business in this building, but certainly in 1940 they were, they were here. So 
It's, a, it's an old building for sure. Okay, Lee, let's go to our next picture then. And another business that got quite a few mentions today on my, or I mean, Monday on my Facebook post was the Dixon Blinding Awning. And uh, many of you know, remember Mr. Ambler Dixon. Uh, he ran this business for many, many years. And I didn't realize, but someone said it's still in business. That, I found that a bit surprising. I didn't realize it was still open. And I think uh, Mr. Dixon is, golly, he's gotta be in his mid-90s now, I'm guessing, 94, 95 maybe. Um, but um, those that remember on the right-hand side of this building, uh, Billy Donaldson had Rocky Mountain Auto Parts for a number of years. And of course, the Tar River is just to the right of this building, and just to the right of this, sadly, is where the Nettles lady drove into the Tar River uh, several years ago, many years ago, and killed herself and I think four of her kids. Um, so, um, in fact, um, I was actually out at, at Pine View Cemetery a couple of months back, and stumbled across their graves, the mother and the four kids. They're, they're buried actually not too terribly far from where my grandparents are buried out there. Uh, but that's where that happened at, right beside this location right here. Um, something else I thought was interesting that uh, I had forgotten all about. How many of you remember the giraffe that was on top of Dixon Blinding Awning? Uh, I don't know when they took that thing down. Um, I, I, when I saw it, it kind of made a brought a smile to my face because I'd forgotten all about the giraffe, but I do remember there being a giraffe on top of that building for a long time. And I'd be curious to know what happened to it. If anybody knows what happened to the giraffe, call and let me know. 407-1111 is a number. Glad to hear from you. Okay, Lee, this next series of pictures um, is about six of these, I think, or maybe even seven. No, it's six. And I was really pleasantly surprised to find out about the history of this business here because I knew they were in existence um, for many years, but I never uh, had anything to do with them myself, never had them do any work for me. But the Master Shoe Repair, um, and it was, I think the location, I've got it written down somewhere. It may be on the picture. Look, if, if you pull that next picture up there, um, let me look at my notes here because I did have a, uh, reference. There we go. Well, let me back up a minute. Prior to it becoming Master Shoe Repair, it was called Max Shoe Shop. And Max Shoe Shop, Shoe Shop was actually, uh, in 1957, it was located at 200 block of East Thomas Street. And they advertised, of course, repaired while you wait. Um, ben Mac McLean and his wife started the business. And um, they obviously were successful at it. Uh, Lee, let's go to the next picture. I think there's like six in this series. We'll go through one but one one. I, I do not remember this. This was obviously um, probably in the very early stages of the business. And it's the sign beside it there looked like a TV repair shop. So I, I don't know, I don't remember the 200 block of East Thomas Street having a TV repair shop. Uh, unless that TV stands for something else. But anyway, maybe someone else remembers uh, when Max was at this location. But the owner, um, Mr. Ben Mac McLean, and his wife started Max Shoe Repair. And they operated here for a number of years. And then at some point, uh, they moved into their current location. And, uh, golly, I had that written down somewhere. And for the life of me, I cannot, it may show. Go ahead and leave to the next picture because there's, there's three or four, or I think it's actually a total of six. This is a shot from inside the place, and I think this is still from the original location here. As I said, I've, I've known about this business for a number of years. I knew they were in existence, but shoe repair is just something that I've not had a, a need for and, and have never, the only time I've ever been into a shoe shop that I remember was out there when um, the Thurington's Cobbler shop was at Terrytown Mall. I think I went in there to have a set of boots and had the heel nailed back on them one time. Uh, but anyway, let, go ahead, let's go through these. I think there's only a couple more of them. And um, I, I'm not sure if this is at the original location or not. Uh, it was all, these were all identified in the same segment of pictures. And I think there's one more, Lee. Uh, let's go ahead and pull that one up too. And I'm thinking that gentleman to the left may be Mr. McLean, Mr. Mac McLean. I'm not positive about that, but I think, because I saw a picture, of, a more recent picture of him. I think he has since passed. In fact, I saw a, 
a picture that was a, a appeared to be from the um, one of the Rocky Mount uh, Chamber of Commerce meetings where his wife was uh, presented with some kind of award for longevity in business I think it was and at, and you know from 1957 until today and still in operation that business has been going on 65 years um, so well 63 I guess 63 years but still that's a long time to be in the shoe repair business I think there might be one more lead let's take a look at the next one in this series here there you go there's Mr. Mack and um, like I said the address and I had it somewhere I it may have been another piece of paper I didn't bring that with me but in any case I'm, I'm thinking it's down on uh, Church Street and I want to say it's on the I'm sorry Main Street and I think I want to say it's on the on the west side of Main Street. Someone remember, I'm sure. Give us a call, 407-1111. But um, Master Shoe Repair, certainly one of Rocky Mount's old established family businesses that has been with us a long time. So congratulations to the, the McLean family. Okay, Lee, um, let's go on to the next picture then. And this next one, I do believe, Oh, there's uh, Mac and his wife. Um, I forgot I had this one in the group too. Yeah, that was Mac on the left, and like I think he has since passed. Uh, but I did see a picture of his wife, and uh, and as I said, it was in. It appeared to be a chamber, uh, some kind of uh, gathering of local business owners, and she had been presented some kind of award. And I, I think I remember reading something to do with. I don't know if it was a 40-year plaque or maybe perhaps even a 50-year plaque. But anyway, that's. Um, I, I do believe he's passed on so okay all right Lee let's go to the next picture then and this next one okay um, it's a vacant lot here now but in let me get my notes uh, somewhere around 19 let's see here 1940 I think when I no excuse me 19 yeah 19 40 in the city directory 108 Marigold Street was listed as the location for Rocky Mount Radiator Works. So when I saw that, and I got this picture first, and then I went and looked at the 1963 city directory, and in the 1963 city directory, Rocky Mount Radiator Works was listed at 118 uh, Marigold Street. So, Lee, the next picture, if you'll just go ahead and show the next one, it is a view of both 108 and 110, or 110 and I think that's 116 actually. But in any case, this was their location uh, in 1940 and in 1963. Now, when I went back and looked at the 1930 city directory, the address for Rocky Mount Radio Works was listed at 243 South Washington Street. Um, I didn't get a picture of that location. Um, well, wait a minute. I think I'm, no, no, I didn't. Because this is, let's go to the next one, Lee. I think the next picture I've got, yeah, this is a picture of actually, that's Linwood Brazel up there kneeling. And I, I don't know who these gentlemen are behind him back there. But in any case, um, they were obviously down on South Washington Street. They're on the left across from Dillon Supply Company. In fact, Dillon has got the space where they used to be. Uh, that That's the earliest location I remember them being was over there on South Washington Street across from Dillon Supply. And then, of course, sometime in later years, they built a nice new modern place out on 301 and moved out there. And uh, sadly, Linwood has since passed. Uh, Miss June is still with us. And, oh, we got a call. Let's get this call. Oh, we lost him. I'm sorry, we lost your call. Um, call back if you can, 407-1111. But anyway, um, 1927, I think is what I remember reading on, uh, here we go. Hello there, are you on the air? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you there? I'm here. <laughs> okay, the, the very first picture you showed when you, you had that telephone pole in the front. Now, right, yeah. Going back a couple of pictures, uh, that was uh, the vacant lot where where George, Ed, George S. Edwards Wholesale Grocery was, but on the corner of Washington Street and Marigold Street is where Gene's daddy had Rocky Mount Radiator to start with. And Lumwood came in there, went to work with them, and married her. And then they moved down there. 
and the next block south across from the back door of Dillon Supply. Right. But you, I don't know any of those people that you're looking at right there, but... Uh, well, that's Linwood kneeling down. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know any of the rest of them. I, I don't know. Now, I don't, I don't either. I didn't recognize any other one, but I did recognize him. He was a much younger man. You this go picture. back to that two pictures back where you showed what looked like mostly was a vacant lot. That's that's where the spur track used to go down beside of uh, George S. Edwards. Right, and I, I remember that, and I'm wondering if maybe because in the 19, oh shoot, 1940s city directory, I think it was, um, that was the address given for Rocky Mountain Rated Works. What? What address? Uh, to, uh, one, uh, 108. Um, Marigold. Yes, 108 Marigold Street. In the 1940 directory, 108 Marigold Street was listed as an address for Rocky Mountain Radio Works. Well, that was before my time, but I remember <laughs> when uh, Rocky Mountain Radio was out on the corner of Washington and in Marigold kind of right straight across the street from the front door of Rock, T.C. Robbins' pool room. Right, okay, yeah, that was in the 1963 directory, they're showing at 118 Marigold Street. So that would be just a little couple doors down. All right. So, okay, buddy, appreciate you here. All right, we'll see you. And folks, that's gonna wrap it up. Bring it back to me, Lee, if you would. We ran slam out of time, folks. I had a couple more I wanted to show you, but we'll try to get to those next week. So, oh, there's a blurry fellow. There he is. There he is. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I thank you for your calls and your input. We always enjoy hearing from you. Have yourselves a great week. Take care of yourselves, folks, and be kind to each other. We'll see you next week with more Way Back Wednesday. Good night. You're now watching Way Back Wednesday, sponsored by Flores Glass and Mirror Company. Service in the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work. I'm Daniel Moss, owner of Cornerstone Funeral Home, and I'd like to invite you and your family to give our family an opportunity to serve you in your time of need. And we offer a full line of funeral services, everything from visitations to graveside services to cremations on site with a live crematory, as well as a banquet hall to meet the catering needs of our families that we serve. We offer catering service, we offer refreshments prior to visitations and services of our family, and we want to invite you to come and experience the difference here. Cornerstone Funeral Home. When faced with special care needs for elderly or disabled loved ones, families want compassionate, comforting care. That's Tender Touch Home Care Services' goal, providing the level of care we would expect for our own. With over 10 years of home care excellence, Tender Touch provides an array of services that keeps your loved one at home. From personal care, light housekeeping, errands, and meal preparation to our private duty care program, which combines all of our home care offerings in one package. Tender Touch Home Care Services, where your needs are our concern. We're in our 18th year of practice at the Hammer Chiropractic Center, and we've seen over 15,000 different people in the Rocky Mountain area. 40% of headaches actually come from a neck problem. Many patients come in taking multiple aspirin, over-the-counter medications and such a day, and we can get you to stop doing that and actually fix the problem so the headaches don't rise anymore. A lot of people think chiropractic hurts. It does not. Most of the people come in and they feel great.